the past 100 hours, I took Bone Spear to the next level. Vaults getting absolutely obliterated. I mean, you just stand still in the end room and you don't even take a single point of damage, while bosses are just falling right in front of you with millions and uber millions of damage. Hell, we even took the Ring of Sacrilegious Souls, one unique, and threw it in the trash because we don't need it anymore. And most of the aspects for the build are available from the Codex of Powers, so you can start right away. Bone Spear is not only perfect for bosses and vaults, it will also be the number one gauntlet build. Now I'll present you two versions of the build. One that's having the uniques, but also the one, the budget version for the people that are just starting out. There's also a few changes in the skill breakdown of Paragon board that I'll dare you to pay good attention to. And I finally dropped my first uber unique, the Melted Heart of Selig, which is technically useless, but it's actually amazingly boosting Bone Spear. Not mandatory, but quite the bonus. I'll provide an alternative, no worries. Gameplay loop changed a little bit. We're still starting with Bone Storm to essentially have that going on together with the infinite Bone Storms from the Litless Wall. But now we're not automatically corpse explosioning anymore. So we have to every six seconds do that ourselves for the damage bonus. And we also have to pull things manually together. But end of the day, you're still essentially shooting out your Bone Spears making sure to always stay above 90 essence as you're casting or never to blast your essence empty because more essence is more multiplier and your bone storm together with the little wall keeps your essence maximized up and then you just keep zooming first all the points into bone spear with enhanced bone spear and also paranormal bone spear very important here is all the points in unliving energy more essence is more damage i'll explain with a key passive but also with a gear section reiterate Lastly, imperfectly balanced for that 15% damage multiplier and hood flesh, so we always have enough corpses for corpse tendrils. Hold up with our blood mist into ghastly blood mist. I wish we could take dreadful blood mist for the 10% bonus critical strike chance, but it turns out that every now and then is actually useful to make those bonus corpses. Only one single point in corpse explosion with a radius increase, because this radius increase essentially gives us the chance to hit more enemies or higher lucky hit chance proccing on our rings. All the bonus damage you can imagine. Bonus damage to distant enemies, a bonus damage to close enemies and damage reduction from them, more damage to cursed enemies, and then Decrepify together with Enhanced Decrepify and also Abhorrent Decrepify for the cooldown reduction. Now, now down here we're playing Corpse Tendrils with a slow, but not with a play Corpse Tendrils for the vulnerable because that's what our bot is doing. Very important, the slow still can be taken despite having slow with Decrepify already because the slow here together with the decrepify slow just applies more stagger on bosses and you just have always perma slow up one single point in serration for the bonus critical strike chance we already have more than enough critical strikes since we're boarding at 90 percent right now this is kind of like a win more thingy if you put more points in now you have compound fracture and also the three points in evulsion here you want in total another three points from your amulet so we get that heavy multiplier more damage reduction for sacrificing your minions and more damage for sacrificing your minions. And then with the Bone Storm, more damage reduction and more crit. And lastly, Ossified Essence with a 90% bonus. Yes, usually this is around about 50%, but we took our gear further. And now every single cast at full essence, and we're always full essence, multiplies all our damage by 90%. That's fantastic. And not only just 90% because I actually lied to you, it is plus another 40%. So that's 90% times 40% again, because the ossified key passive also increases the critical strike damage of your bone skills by 1% per essence above 50 up to 40%. So as long as we're cast casting over 90 essence, and well, we have 280 essence. <laughs> Well, guess what? We're getting incredible damage bonuses there. We are on the sword, and I'm currently playing a sword, a one is also because of the lucky hit chance good. We play critical strike damage, critical strike damage with bone skills, core skill damage, and intelligence. Vulnerable damage would be an alternative. Now to the first unique, and that's the offense litless wall. For more bone storm, so have the continuous crit chance and also damage reduction. Additionally, it provides us with maximum essence and maximum life and a chance to restore more primary resource. Why nice. Total, you have five bone storms going around and these are your sources of lucky hit that continuously keeps you at maximum essence with a ring i'll talk about in a second alternative to this you'll get an offend a focus and on that focus you want lucky hit chance critical strike chance mana cost or essence reduction and also cooldown reduction these are very amazing stats on this one 
and you'll be playing Osseus Gale instead of the Etchmaster passive. Osseus Gale allows you to consume corpses to prolong the duration of a bone storm up to 20 seconds, essentially. You'll only have one very good bone storm instead of five bone storms popping. Still, it's going to be there longer and you'll have the cooldown faster back up. The one ring that rules them all is the Circle of Exposed Flesh, and that's a 48% essence being regenerated by hitting vulnerable enemies. The ring itself wants lucky hit chance, critical strike damage and critical strike chance, and then you can also go for more essence. Now, this ring, together with the Litless Wall, or generally the Bone Storm being up all the way, keeps you at max essence at any point. Therefore, also casting with the maximum amount of damage multiplier bonus and also the amount of crit damage multiplier bonus on top. And the second ring instead of Sacrilegious Souls is currently splintering aspect. For your Bone Spear Splinters, doing a 60% multiplier to have them also go crazy into the millions. Here you can see the maximum essence I have, physical damage and critical strike chance, works perfect. Why is this not as usual on our gloves? That is because we changed the amulet to an uber unique, and that is the Melted Heart of Selig. Now you don't need this uber unique, but it has something unique going on, and that says gain 60 maximum resource. Let's look at our ossified key passive. It's 60.7% multiplicative for all our damage. Well, what would 60 more resource do? And that's the crazy part now. 60 more resource is essentially giving us another 30% multiplier on our damage total. Plus, the Melted Heart of Selig does actually provide us with some crazy amount of tankiness. When taking damage, 75% is drained as two resource for every 1% of maximum life you would have lost. That in between makes sure to keep you on the healthier side. Intriguingly, more movement speed, all stats, pretty nice, but resource generation, 20%. If I'm restoring 50 essence with my ring of exposed flesh, I'm getting 20% more. Yeah, instead of 50, I get 50x 20%. And there's damage while healthy. The damage while thing is not just a plus damage. It ends in the plus damage while bucket, and that one gets multiplied on our damage. Damage while is quite crazy. Now, you might not have this uber unique, and that is okay. In that case, you can put the corpse tendrils on the amulet and look then for the evulsion passive, which gives you that 15% multiplier and ranks to movement speed, total armor, damage and total intelligence, stuff like that to boost your damage equally to what the melted heart has to offer. On your gloves, you do want bone spear though. Critical strike chance, lucky hit chance, attack speed, dexterity doesn't hurt as well. And right now, I do have the corpse general aspect here for the insane multiplier. The good or the bad thing if you don't have the Melted Heart of Selig and you have an amulet with corpse tendrils on it, you can actually free roam your rings because now you get plus one aspect slot. Yes, so Melted Heart of Selig is gone. You put your corpse tendrils over there. Then you can choose either a different aspect on your rings, a different unique ring if you have the Ring of Sacrilegious Souls and you want to play it. Or there's a slot for the Etch Master aspect, where skills deal up to 20x increased damage based on your available primary resource when cast, receiving the maximum benefit while you have full primary resource. Since we already have full primary resource at any point, you get always 20x bonus damage. Seems fantastic to me. Or our boots are rocking the Wind Striker. When we crit chance, we get more movement speed. That movement speed bonus I have is quite low right now, with essence cost reduction so that every cast of Bone Spear is cheaper and therefore I lose less essence to then do more damage to then regain more essence and always be full and it's also stat boots just boosting intelligence all stats willpower would be better if I had dexterity instead of willpower and movement speed would not hurt as well the pens are mandatory with the spawn storm barrier because you do want barrier always up to not take a point of damage total armor and maximum life are non-negotiable and then damage reduction and damage reduction while fortified are quite fantastic. Damage reduction while fortified would be better if it was damage reduction from close or distant enemies because I currently don't get fortified with a build. Our chest piece right now is Juggernaut for the bonus physical damage, total armor, and then just insane amounts of armor bringing us up to 17,000 in total. Now that Juggernaut armor could also be the Soul Brand unique chest, but this is the easiest acquirable key piece to essentially just be tanky. Simple. Done. 13,500 is the armor cap. I'm exceeding that by far, and it's that easy to do. Lastly, with the helmet, we have the Deathly Visage. For the bonus Bone Spear Echo Explosions, and they're going crazy. 
I mean, they get 5% more damage multiplicative for every 30 of your critical strike damage bonus. And we have 800%. 800% is getting another 40% from our corpse tendrils. And therefore, just hitting the Deathless Visage go absolutely crazy. Don't forget that there's even more maximum essence from this helmet boosting our key passive to go more crazy. And yes, it does have 10% damage reduction, just like the Harlequin Crest has 20% damage reduction. And I will reiterate, this is better than the Harlequin Crest for this build. Now you don't have the helmet, don't despair. You could be simply rocking a corpse explosion aspect on Blood Mist, for example. Wouldn't be the best, but it allows you to essentially Blood Mist, Corpse Explosion, bop, 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 and stack your damage multipliers easily while you're avoiding getting hit, plus reducing the cooldown of the Corpse Explosion so you can cast it sooner again as you might get in trouble. Book of the Dead sacrifices are pretty straightforward with the defenders for the resistance. Then on the scale to mages, we get the bonus multiplier against vulnerable enemies. And lastly, the golem into our critical strike damage multiplier. Now the Paragon board did get quite shaken up. We begin with Sacrificial. 10% more damage for sacrificing our minions. Also, we do boost the bonus damage here quite nicely. And we get even more armor just in case your Juggernaut is not there yet or is a low roll. Very important now the Bone Graph board. That gives us 16 maximum essence bonus on cast and an 8% damage multiplier. Nice. Also, more critical strike damage with bone skills. But in total, it gives us 16 essence. Another 4. 20 in total. 24 essence bonus. 28 essence. And it does also give us 3 essence on kill. Every enemy killed just fills up our essence further. With a lucky hit, you never tap out. Plus, the essence glyph itself for 200% critical strike damage and a 22% multiplier against non-healthy enemies. Fantastic. Traveling into the Flash Eater board. And you notice, well, we have to cast our corpse explosions now. But as soon as you cast five and now you have full control over it, you get the 50 per you get the 40% bonus multiplicative damage, which gets slotted together with the exploit glyph, since you can really easily take it without much hassle, or the bonus damage against vulnerable enemies and a bonus multiplier again. Traveling down into the Send of Death board for a permanent 15% damage reduction, or if we explode all the corpses away, another 15% damage bonus. Here, boosting with the Imbiber Glyph to make our damage while healthy even more damage while, and that creates a very good multiplier for nice damage. Then we get even more damage while in the Bloodbath board, and la the and the Control Glyph. I choose to play the Control Glyph here for a simple reason. I play the control glyph here for a simple reason, because that 20% multiplier works so good in vaults right now. Undeniable. Lastly, go a few points up to get even more damage while healthy from the upper region. And that in total just catapults our damage to the next level. Pair this together with your robot on Tempest with resource support and efficiency. Yes, efficiency for more critical strike chance. And then breaking so he does get everything vulnerable. Works very good against bosses to just squeeze out that extra crit chance to bring you up to like 90 plus. Flash of Adrenaline to boost our damage. Tactical support for the cooldown reduction duration for longer. And safeguard to have even more damage reduction. You want to be untouchable. Ladies and gentlemen, the absolute undying S tier super bone gone. Give it a try. You won't find anything more S tier than this in the Necromancer category. Now, if you also want to get a hint on how to absolutely destroy Malphus, especially with this build, here's a video for you.